All right, we're talking with Terry Hutchinson, who's uh, Hutchinson, who's here serving as tactician aboard Barking Mad, Jim Richardson's Far 40. Uh, first and foremost, talk about the relationship you and Jim have had. How many years have you been sailing now? Since uh, since 2000. Really? Yeah. So this is, uh, Do you remember the first regatta you did with him? Yep. First regatta was in uh, November of uh, 2000 in <laughs> Miami. Mm -hmm. In um, I want to say it was fall number 75, mm -hmm. was, uh, the Far 40, but brand new boat and a uh, brand new team, and from there the relationship has flourished and, and uh, remained great friends, and as you know, he's the godfather for my youngest child, so it's, uh, right. it's a really good thing. Well, that's what people don't realize, the relationship that you all, people think that pro sailors are just mercenaries, but uh, I mean, you do develop relationships with these owners that you sail with, especially when you've done it for a long time, correct? Yeah. No, that's right, and that's the, um, I mean, you develop relationships with the teams on the boat and the, and the owners, and, and really that's one of the best things about probably the sport that we have going is that you know, I'm close friends with a lot of the guys that I work for, but uh, also mindful of, of the fact that they are my boss. And right. So, you know, you have to make sure that you do right by them and that you do a good job for them. And uh, you know, it's great to it's great to come back to Key West and see uh, you know see some old friends and hopefully make some new ones and uh, you know be involved in this. Now, the FAR 40 isn't quite the same as its heyday here. We used to be a time when there'd be 17, 18 FAR 40s, but it's still a pretty competitive fleet. The boats that are here are yeah. pretty good. No, Tell, assess the competition. Everybody here is good. You know, the uh, current world champions here, mm -hmm. Flash Gordon, and uh, you know, I think part of the reason for the small turnout is simply the world for in uh, Chicago in you know, late September and it's just you know it's a burden for a lot of people to put in a big push for a regatta like that and then have to come to Key West. You know, it's a, it's a big expense and it's a lot of time and a lot of effort. So and it's part of the reason for the small turnout but at the same time you're seeing a lot of other classes and a lot of other boats that are having big numbers, you know, the J70, I mean how impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. It's such a short period of time that they're getting that many boats here. And uh, yeah, you know, it's a uh, competition, all flash, and, you know, you know Groover Derchi is going to be good. So, you know, actually, I think all of them, mm -hmm. you know, anybody's going to win races, and so it's a, uh, a challenge probably really is still within our own lifelines on the boat and, and making sure we take care of business here. Now, I think Jim did a, a claim back to win that North American circuit. Yeah. Um, w w you're jumping back into the boat after having not been aboard for a while. Are you, are there any concerns about chemistry issues, or do no. you think they would have a small, no? Yeah, no. No. I mean, I, you know, we've had a couple really good days of practice, and everybody on the boat is, you know, everybody's good, and, and uh, on top of, you know, any shortcomings that we have, everybody's into it, and so you make up for a lot of, of uh, any of our mistakes that we would potentially make on the race course by just people putting in 110 percent. And uh, I would say I'm probably the one that's going to make the most. You know, I, the last couple of days of sailing, just getting reacclimated to it all and looking at the wind and you know things that happen you know on this boat they happen a lot slower than what I'm used to over the past two years and so in some ways it's a uh, it's fun to come back and do mm -hmm. and that the best thing about the experience that I've just gone through is that you get to see a different aspect of the sport of sailing right and um, there's some pros and cons to that well, as I say is it even applicable though <laughs> um, yeah I mean you know sailing the multi-hull was um, what that teaches is you have to be really, really good at identifying the wind on the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an obvious statement, but you, it's even more so important in that right. in that type of boat because a little bit of wind speed goes a long way. Right. And uh, so it is applicable. Mm -hmm. And uh, but you know, going around the race course here, you know, getting speeds out of a Far 40, you know, requires all 10 of us on board. Right. And, uh, and so that's the the challenge with these boats is getting the whole team. Uh, to work really together in a very mm -hmm. short period of time because we're a fairly new group on the boat. Right. So what Terry's referring to is he had been serving as skipper of Artemis racing the Swedish syndicate that was challenging for the America's Cup. Um, now, what is next for Terry Hutchinson? What do you feel like you're, you know, do you have a, a, some thoughts? I'm sure you've had a few months to kind of regroup and what are yeah. you looking at going forward? What am I looking at? <clears throat> you know, that's a good question. We're going to do uh, this year, Jim's got the FAR 40 and the FAR 30, mm -hmm. uh, and he just purchased the Melges 20, so we have about 80 days of racing this year. Okay. And then I'm going to serve as tactician for Quantum Racing. Okay. Uh, in the TP52? In the TP52. Over at the Med? Yeah, it, okay. in the uh, TP52 Super Series over mm -hmm. in the Med. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to enjoy some time with my family. Right. You know, the, uh, if there's an upside to everything that's just happened, it's uh, we have season passes at Squaw Valley and, mm -hmm. and uh, go do some skiing. Gonna go do some skiing and 
And you know, the, the this side of the America's Cup that now a lot of people see is the amount of commitment that the families make to the whole thing. Right. And You've the, moved your family out to San Francisco, did yeah, you not? We, we lived in Spain for a year. Mm -hmm. We are 11 months for school year, and now we've moved out to San Francisco. And you know, Shell and the kids have made an incredible sacrifice, really. Sure. And the commitment to the whole thing, and so. I feel more disappointed for them than I do for myself simply because of the commitment that they've made to help me pursue my dream. Right. And so we're going to take some well needed family time and, and uh, enjoy San Francisco. I mean, it's a beautiful spot. It's mm -hmm. a great place to, uh, to have the kids. There's so much going on. And it's just a, you know, it's a really good spot. So we're going to take that on and you know, we'll see where that leads us. But pretty confident that we'll uh, be back in Annapolis in the middle of the summer. Perfect. Yeah.